creepypasta, a catch-all term for any horror content posted around the internet. You've probably all seen them before, and in this, I'll be reading three of them for a creep voxel. Reading the stories while making voxel art based on them. So, on to the first one. Number one, the movie theatre. You're happy. The sun is shining in a perfect cloudless blue sky. The birds are singing peaceful tunes. Everyone you meet is kind and gracious to you. And your friends are picking you up this evening to take you to that movie you've been wanting to see. But that's not why you're happy. As you finish applying your makeup, you hear the doorbell ring. You joyfully make your way down the stairs and open the door to see your friends and they take you to the movies. While at the concession stand, you and your group buy lots of popcorn, candy and drinks and go into the movie theatre and up the lit stairs where you find a row and take your seats, excited for the movie. The popcorn, candy and soda was delicious. You have finished your buttery popcorn and your sweethearts when it happens. You don't notice it, but it's there. A little black elliptical dot in the top right hand corner of the screen flashes for a split second. Most people don't notice it, but some do, and they usually assume it's a glitch that occurred with the projection. But it's not a glitch, it happens in every single movie that has ever been in theatres. The truth of this strange little dot is that it is a device used by unknown beings that control your mind. The first few movies you've seen, you've probably noticed it, but as time passed, it slipped your vision, along with several other details and fragments of your life. And now I reveal the true origin of your happiness. Was it the perfect weather? No. Was it the kindness everyone had towards you? No. Was it the movie's intriguing plot? No. It's the refreshments you got from the concession stand. The popcorn, the candy, the soda, Everything is made by the same entities that want to control your mind and loosen your grip on reality. Special chemicals masked by the flavours are embedded within the foods that you love most. Not just in movie theatres, but in restaurants, shopping malls and even the checkout at Walmart. And these chemicals have the same properties of Exonax, but without the side effects. Basically, they make you view the world as a happy place, a joyful place, while you are slowly being driven insane. It starts out mild, you fail to see the occasional detail in a story or a movie, gradually it gets worse, larger fragments disappear, and eventually you overlook entire paragraphs and pages of a book, become plain white. I won't tell you what happens after, you will just but get you are happy. The world is happy. Happy, happy, happy. Number two, the vault of humanity. In the year 2005, the Humanity Archival Storage Project was commenced by the leading government official, scientists and academic alumni. Across the world, due to fear that humanity's treasures were increasingly threatened by war and natural disasters, the project was one of the most complex undertakings in our species' history. The creation of an archive of humanity's knowledge and culture the archival simplexical computer was designed in the early days of the project. The device was composed of iron, the most stable of elements, and built to stand as a testament to our species for millennia. After the construction of the ASC, I was assigned to the HAPS team. We were a diverse bunch, consisting of representatives and every other possible area of the human study. 
Our task was to program the device with information and artifacts worth preserving. Our group started off cordially enough, but we quickly broke down into sects and factions as we started to fought viciously over what would be saved. The artists wanted musical samples and paintings saved. The historians wanted their nation's prize documents included, and the scientists wanted their formulas and theories preserved. Eventually, through a series of backroom deals and shifting alliances between the desperate groups, a compromise of sorts was reached of Newton and Einstein, the plays of Shakespeare, the music of Mozart, the paintings of Picasso, and many other great discoveries and creations of humanity. In 2012, it was finally time to store the device. Ranging from the Himalayas to the bottom of the Atlantic, eventually a decision was made to place the ASC beneath the Sweeney Mountains in Antarctica. The location was free from war and fault lines. The frigid cord would even slow down wear and tear on the machine, extending its lifespan for another millennia or so. It was the perfect place to station a device. Construction of the ASC vault started in 2013. The process took another year, but eventually the construction team reached suitable depths. I was there for the opening ceremony, as the drill team dug through the last 20 or so feet to reach appropriate levels for the ASC vault. At around noon, I heard the drilling stop. I thought they had finally reached acceptable levels, but the loud screaming that quickly filled the air freed me from this thought. A rescue team was sent in, but they reported that the drillers had hit a cavern hundreds of feet deep. A rescue operation was quickly launched, but all that was left of the team was corpses and smashed machinery. We had simply fallen from too great of a height for there to be any survivors. During the cleanup, the body recovery team discovered something rather unusual. An ASC like device wedged into the corner of the cavern. The device was nearly 5,000 years old. Number 3 The Broadcast In 1988, an unknown broadcast overtook several UHF stations in the Midwestern United States for six consecutive nights. The broadcast would only last for a few minutes and consisted of white static with a grey silhouette of a person in the centre of the screen. The shadowed figure spoke with an androgynous but deep voice and always spoke in whispers. Those who witnessed the unknown broadcast reported that the figure would make bizarre statements that would influence one person but not another. It's been confirmed by witnesses that the figure had said the following Go to sleep. Don't drink the water. Conceive. Don't believe anyone. Don't trust anyone. Save me. Use the knife. Bury him. Burn the evidence. And find me. After the broadcasts hit the airwaves, a massive string of criminal activities began manifesting throughout the Midwest. Burglaries, physical and sexual assaults, attempted murder, attempted suicide, and arson plague of many towns and cities. Those who were arrested all claimed that they were just following orders and that they had to listen because the figure's voice gave them reoccurring nightmares. The nightmares only stopped after they committed the crimes. The origin of the broadcast remains unknown and the purpose of the broadcast has never been determined. <laughs>